was on vacation visiting my sister's family and I was on the phone the entire day dealing with stuff. And one of my nephews goes, well, why is Uncle Colin mad all the time? And uh, my sister's response was, well, that's because he works with idiots. Uh, <laughs> Which that was easier to explain than what was really going on. But again, it was, you know, I, you know, you're, you're not able to relax. You're not able to take that mental break from, you know, dealing with it. And today we're diving into a topic that affects many of us in the tech industry, whether we like to admit it or not, how to manage your mental health in the fast paced and demanding workspace. If you're here, you probably already know that working in tech can be incredibly rewarding, but it also can be incredibly stressful. And when that stress starts to take a toll on our mental health, it is important to step back and prioritize our well-being. Today, we're going to be diving into all kinds of topics related to mental health and IT, from stress management to burnout prevention to building resilience and fostering a healthy work-life balance. This is actually part two of an interview I we did with Colin Keyes, who is a business technology manager. So whether you're a programmer, a system administrator, or anything in between, we got you covered. So sit back and enjoy today's interview. I want to take a minute and talk about something a little bit more serious. Um, mm -hmm. In the field, mental health is often kind of a, there's kind of a blind eye to mental health. I feel like in the field, um, a lot of times, uh, especially lately, people are kind of working themselves uh, ragged. Um, you know, they're trying to like what I call superhero syndrome. They're trying to really just take on all the job tasks um, that they possibly can and like don't even come up to breathe. Mm -hmm. uh, what What is your thought on that? So. I think I, again, I've, I've had a unique experience with it. I was diagnosed with major depression, depressive disorder when I was 19 years old. And, you know, for a long, I just, I was in college. I didn't know what was going on. And I just, I felt off. I didn't want to do anything. Um, you know, it just wasn't a good, for like headspace to be in. And so uh, I started out on some medications and like many people in their, early 20s, uh, I was like, oh, great, I feel great. And I stopped taking them and then it would come back and, um, you know, started to do. And as I got older, realized that it's not just a temporary thing. It is a it's a medical condition. It's not a, you know, and I think even just from my side, I misunderstood it on thought it was, you know, it was a mood related thing. And, you know, I, I took time explaining it and understanding it and telling people it's like, you know, I was explaining to my family that, you know, well, I, I have depression and their response was, well, we didn't know you were sad. And I'm like, no, that's sad is an emotion. You can be sad and you can be depressed at the same time. And they're two completely different things. Um, you know, there's a part of my brain that is sick. That's the reality of it. And so to maintain that, I take medication every day. I work with a therapist and I also document what I've seen as known stressors or when mood changes come up and things like that. Um, now, living in the Pacific Northwest, I was told, it's like, oh, if you could get sun first thing in the morning every day, that'd be fantastic. I'm like, I live in Oregon. The likelihood of that happening every day is like slim to none. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. you know. But I got one of the the happy lights that initially I was like, who that there's no way that works. And I noticed a difference. So, you know, it's it's no different than any other lifelong medical condition that someone lives with. It's just better having an understanding. Um, it was after that that I then learned that they included things like ADHD as a mental health condition, which I was diagnosed with at a very young age. And for a long time, I was just didn't want to be different. So I didn't take medication for it. And then when I was in my 30s and finally did, I was like, oh, dear God, where has this been my entire life? You know, everything is so much easier for me to do. I can focus and do what I need to. And, uh, you know, it's at times I joke that it's, you know, it just makes me more creative because my brain's operating at about 15 different projects at the same time. Um, it's just a matter of what one's going to come out. It's, uh, you know, so trying to make sure you stay organized on that. But it's another one <laughs> of, uh, you know, I utilize technology to help keep myself organized. So my phone controls my life. That's why I had the alarm go off momentarily. Um, you know, everything is in my phone, in my calendar, in my, you know, reminders. You know, I have daily checklists of things I know I have to get done. And it's simple things that people would be like, well, yeah, you should just know that. It's like, yeah, but in my brain, that doesn't take priority. It's the, you know, 
hey, what about that book we thought about writing when we were in ninth grade? You know, we should do that again. It's like, dude, that was like 20 years ago. It's like, yeah, but we could totally pull that off right now. Um, so trying to keep those on top of things. Um, and then uh, when COVID was starting, I was further diagnosed with a generalized anxiety disorder. And um, a lot of the later stage ones is some of the mood or and anxiety stuff noticed it was coming up a lot worse. Um, I'd actually been involved in a, a car accident. And uh, while they didn't find anything at the time, there was a lot of belief that I may have suffered a traumatic brain injury, uh, which then led me to look back at uh, my career in playing sports and the now knowing what they are god-awful amount of concussions I suffered playing football when I was growing up. And at the time, no one really knew. It was just shake it off, get back out there, you're fine. You know, you got your bell rung. Well, now we know that every time you get your bell rung, you should probably stop playing. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, uh, you know, I was back in the day where they had the flimsy cloth chin strap, and I was the tallest kid in the league, so everyone hit me right under the chin, and my head would snap back and be like, oh, you're fine. You get back out there. Well, now we know that causes severe <laughs> damage to your brain. And so um, I am a firm believer that stuff like that does impact your overall mental health and your mood. It's no different because it, it affects the chemicals, and that's ultimately what's causing the mental health conditions is you have a chemical imbalance in your brain somewhere. And... You know, it's it's a it's a lifelong thing now that I, I live with. It's no different than if someone has, you know, diabetes or if they've, you know, had to have, you know, a you know, a pacemaker installed. It is a it is it a condition that you have, but what I have found is I don't let that define who I am. It's just a piece of who I am. And many people don't talk about it. Um, you know, I got told, you know, just get over it. Stop being sad. It's like that's Oh, that's it. That's all I had to do was just tell myself <laughs> to stop and it'll be better. Oh, OK, great. I, I could have saved thousands of money in therapy. If exactly. Someone just told me that, <laughs> you know, it's like you don't you don't tell someone with a broken leg. It's like, well, just just stop having a broken leg. Just, you know, be and it's like it's no different. You know, it's it's a it's a condition. And for a long time, I worked in an industry that was not very supportive of mental health. Uh, it was the construction industry. It's, uh, you know. It's still a very macho, you know, you don't talk about your feelings and you don't do this. And, um, you know, that's not a good thing because as I found in doing my studies, construction has the second highest suicide rate of any industry in the United States. And most of it's because people suffer from mental health issues and they aren't told to talk about it. And so when I found that, I was like, I'm not going to hide behind these things anymore. These are things that need to be known. People, I need to tell people we need to address it. We need to talk about it. And if until we can talk about it openly, it's not going to be looked at and treated as legitimately as it needs to. And there's still health insurance companies that won't cover mental health coverage because they don't think it's an actual medical condition or it's not worth investing. And it's like, yes, but there's links between poor mental health physically impacting your physical health. So if you can take care of the mental health problems, you reduce the, it's like, then you're still saving money, but it's still not looked upon in that, in that way. And so uh, I decided as a individual with it, that I wasn't going to hide about it. And so, you know, if there's stories out there about people with it, I try to spread information about it. Uh, if people ask me about it. I'm always open to talk about it. Um, again, you know, it's a part of who I am. I, I don't let it define what I do. You know, I've had good cycles. I've had bad cycles, but, you know, it's all part of who I am. And it's a, you know, some days are worse than others. Some days are good, but you just keep struggling and, or not struggling. You keep working through it. And, you know, the thing I heard from a lot of people was, was oh, I suffer from AD, or, you know, depression or ADHD. I'm like, no, I live with because that's what it is. I live with a medical condition and it's making sure that I understand and communicate with people, you know, this is what's going on. And, uh, you know, one of the hardest ones for other people when you're going through that is, you know, well, how do they handle it? And, you know, I tried to explain to people, it's like, if I'm ever in a situation where I'm in one of those, you know, I think you know, Churchill described it uh, as suffering from the black dog, uh, you know, and I was like, if I have any one of those black or dark periods, you know, just know it's not you. I'm sick. That's the reality. And I have to get help for that. And, you know, so by explaining to people what to look for, if they know what's coming, it's easier to have the conversations with them and they can be supportive of what's going on also. Yeah. 
And, you know, um, your story, uh, I, I can relate to it so much because it's so similar. Um, you know, I've been diagnosed with anxiety. Um, I mean, crimpling anxiety. Um, you know, I've had, uh, AD, you know, ADHD and um, I'm losing my train of thought here. Sorry. Um, the words just flew out of my brain, just like, oh, no, you're fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, I, I, I've dealt with, um, anxiety and ADHD before. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, you know, growing up, you know, out of high school, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I was too interested in girls, to be honest with you. Um, I, and then I met my wife and I got a job to put food on the table. I worked in manufacturing for many years. Mm -hmm. And then I got into a job as a bulldozer operator, very similar to construction, working in a mill, you, you don't talk about your feelings no. there. You rub some dirt in it. You know, you mm -hmm. get up and keep on going. And it was in the mill when I was driving a bulldozer late at night. I had one of my first, like, true anxiety attacks. Um, you know, I, growing up, I had PTSD um, from a tra traumatic childhood. And while driving this bulldozer, I just had this crimpling anxiety. And uh, you can't describe it to anyone. Um, mm -hmm. and you, you, and, and you, you know, if you felt it, it just, it takes over your whole being. Um, and I finally went to a doctor and uh, got medicine, started getting better. I'm like, Oh, I'm all good now. I don't need this medicine. I, and got off of it. And sure enough, you know, about six months later, the anxiety came back and just mm. completely shut down my life. And it, it was at that moment I decided you know, I'm thankful for it because it was at that time I decided I wasn't happy with my life. I know mm -hmm. I wasn't happy just doing these jobs. I mean, don't get me wrong. The bulldozer operator paid great. I was making like 73,000 a year. Mm -hmm. And I also was doing is sit down on my butt all day, um, much like I do now sometimes. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's a lot healthier of a work culture. Mm -hmm. But um I was tired of being at a dead end job and yeah. it was that kick in the pants for me actually that I needed to finally say, you know what? I'm done with this. I'm going to do what I enjoy doing. Yeah. And I, had, I sat down and talked with my family uh, and you know, my wife was super supportive of, of me um, cause she, she knew it all along and she, you know, she had been trying to tell me and Oh no, that couldn't be me. I couldn't possibly have something wrong in my brain, you know. Um, you know, what are you talking about? I just kind of shut down when I can't, mm -hmm. you know, when I get overwhelmed. I, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't do that. Um, I and I finally had to have a look in the mirror, and uh, you know, you you never think when you hear these kind of stories, you you never think, oh, that's going to be you, or that could happen to you, or you're going through that. That's someone else, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm, I don't have these problems, but really, you know, it, it, you're you're right, a hundred percent that this doesn't get talked about enough in general, and let alone, I think sometimes in the IT field, I think a lot of people try to take on too much and mm -hmm. take on uh, too many responsibilities and you know, get overwhelmed. So yeah, ab and, and, absolutely. And I've seen that a lot also. I mean, I think there's a lot of times we get burnt out and, you know, a lot of the things, you know, we've dealt with is, you know, oh, well, I can't afford to take time off because what if something goes wrong? And then you're not relaxed. You're not able to de-stress. You're still in that fight or flight or survival mode of an anxiety attack while you're on vacation. And, you know, I remember being on a trip once and I was on vacation visiting my sister's family and I was on the phone the entire day dealing with stuff. And one of my nephews goes, well, why is uncle Colin mad all the time? And uh, my sister's response was, well, that's because he works with idiots. Uh, <laughs> Which that was easier to yeah. explain than what was really going on. But again, it was, yep. you know, I, you know, you're, you're not able to re relax. You're not able to take that mental break from, you know, dealing with it. And uh, thankfully, the organization I work for now, you know, when I say, you know, hey, I'm taking a day off for non-work related stuff. You know, I tell people, here's if it's an emergency, call me. Otherwise, I get left alone. It's fantastic. I and I trust the guys I have on my team to do their do their work when I'm out of the office. So that was another issue I used to have was, you know, I wouldn't trust anyone else to do anything. So I did all of it. And that's, that's not that's, healthy either. That leads to burn burnout. And, you know, you've you've made yourself a single point of failure. And it was one of the things I decided was. I just don't I don't have the time for that. You know, I need to be able to, you know, have a work life balance and try to do other things. So, um, you know, 
the one thing I found was I think the best representation I've seen on on TV of a person with an anxiety attack what has been the TV show Ted Lasso and his where his hands get numb and he hears the ringing in the ears. I've experienced all of that when I've had mine. And that's usually the first sign. It's like if my hands start going numb, it's like, OK, I got to take a step back. I got to do something else. And, you know, um, I've had a doctor who said, you know, take this if you have an anxiety attack. And it used to be originally hated flying. I'd have to take it every time. And then I flew to Utah every week from October to November of last year to cover <laughs> cover the team down there. And it's like, I don't care about flying anymore. <laughs> you, you know, I found a cure for anxiety while flying. Flying, What's that? A, flying a small corporate jet. That, that the tur- turbulence is 10 times worse when 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 the pilot's looking back at you and he's tugging on his seatbelt. Yeah, and, like, and buckle then, up. It's gonna be- yeah. <laughs> and then two seconds later, you see people bouncing off the ceiling. Yeah, that yeah, that, that would click here. Take care of it. Yeah, you're not scared no more. Um, no, no. <laughs> but, um, you know, you're you're talking about burnout and stuff. And it is super, super true in the field. And it happens really easy. And I hate this saying. But it is true. You know, I I don't live to work. I Mm -hmm. work to live. Um, I think I said that right. Right. (laughs) But anywho, um, it it sounds horrible. But in the end of the day, it's true. I Mm -hmm. don't I don't go to work. I I enjoy my job. I love my job. I I have a lot of fun. And like if I won the lottery, I'd still be doing what I do. Mm -hmm. But on the at the end of the day, my family comes first. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, when you're on vacation, I've been there in your shoes where you're I was at uh, in Las Vegas on family vacation with my entire family. And I got my phone ringing off the hook because and to be honest with you, this was the littlest, the stupidest things that I didn't mm-hmm. even need to get a phone call for. But I'm like, I'm trying to relax here. And, you know, I told my boss, I'm like, hey, I'm on vacation. I'm turning off my cell phone. Yeah. And I did. And, you know, he he completely understood and supported that. It just unfortunately it was other people in the company that didn't understand that. What? You're taking vacation? Mm-hmm. What are we supposed to do about our Word documents? Right. So, and, I mean, and that's I, I'm also of the. I can show you guys how to do this and then you don't have to bug us anymore. Um, I also became a big proponent on the, no, we have a ticket system. And yes, you think by emailing me directly, it's going to get done faster. But in reality, I have like 800 unread emails in my inbox right now. And yours is just another one in there that I'm going to have to catch up on. So keep it in the ticket system. We do things for a reason. And, you know, there's always going to be that pushback on it. And I just finally just told my team, I'm like, we're putting boundaries. And just like everyone in personal life, I have work boundaries. You can CC me on the ticket, but I'm not going to respond unless it's actually in a ticket, period. And because for the longest time, I would just do it. And I was like, you know what? No, we're not changing behavior. So unless we make the change and force them to do it, because... This is where my my actual bachelor's degree in social sciences comes in handy. I know how people operate. I can go, they're not going to change their behavior unless we force them to change their behavior. So, you you know what I used to do is that I had that issue a lot. And I used to just blatantly copy and paste their email into a ticket Mm -hmm. and refuse to communicate in any other way but that ticket. And it, it, it was it was a jerk move. But you know what? It took I think it took maybe a month. And all of a sudden, they they quit just trying to pick up the phone and call me for basic things. Mm -hmm. They quit emailing me. They started filling out the tickets because and, you know, it's not just for, you know, just not just to do it to be spiteful or anything. But that ticket system serves so many purposes. Mm -hmm. You're one, you're you're organizing and prioritizing um, your your different responses to every situation. You're logging your work so you have a proof of work. You know, someone who is in a lower position, their boss comes to them and say, hey, what did you do today? Mm -hmm. You can pull up your ticket system and like, well, look, I've notated everything I've done every single, you know, all day long. It's all right here. Um, You know, the the ticketing system is like a huge piece. And I'm saying that as I work for an organization that doesn't have a ticketing system because we are just – so tiny Um, uh you know i've thought about implementing it but literally our organization is 25 people total including myself so it's it's really small initially that was my thing and i and then i utilized um because prior to the ticketing system and this was when i was with the construction company they didn't have in-house it everything was managed by a managed service provider and with that managed service provider though 
they still wouldn't submit tickets. So like things just wouldn't get fixed or things wouldn't get set up. And, you know, I remember they told me to set up an, a laptop for an intern and I opened it up and the lid fell all the way backwards because the hinge was broken. They're like, well, no, you just prop it up against the wall. I'm like, we're not going to get any of these kids to work for us because we gave them crap equipment. Like we got to fix this. And, uh, I started utilizing the the free Spiceworks one because then I was yep. I was just forwarding an email and then that allowed me to go in and be like, look, we have all these things, we have these problems related to this. Maybe we need to give a training on how to actually use this program because no one's able to figure it out. Or this is why we're doing X, Y, and Z. And yeah. then it allowed us to show, you know, here's what we're working on, here's the items we have. Um currently we do have a ticket system. Um I'm not the biggest fan of the platform. But as an organization as a whole, we're part of a, a parent company um, who has offices in Europe and Australia and New Zealand. So it's a worldwide organization and uh, everyone has their own ticket system. And so we've all decided, like, OK, let's just get one for everyone. And like, yeah. but it has to work in all parts of the country. Cause right now there's one that's very specific for our world headquarters in Italy. It's like, OK, that's great. But that doesn't help anyone who's working in Portland right now. You know, we need something right. that works for everyone. So um, we've been investigating some of those different platforms. But, um, you know, I was when I was looking, I went online and was like, what's a good free resource for a ticket system? Uh, I'm currently having a situ an issue of looking at uh, making request forms for one of our softwares because we have to have a consultant do all the work. And right now, when it comes in as a ticket, it has to then be shifted to a completely separate queue, which is then forwarded to him because he's an outside consultant, so he's not within the system. It's like, let's just make a Microsoft form that gives a number and we can have the email go to him. And then I have an Excel sheet of this is all the requests. This is when it was, this is when it's due. Yeah. And then we can follow up with them on a weekly basis of, did these requests get finished? Google, so, Google, I did the same thing with a Google forum. Yeah. Uh, Cause it just yep. spits out on Google sheets and I've used spice uh, before and it's a great resource. I'm, I'm curious. Um, Side topic here, offside mm -hmm. the interview. Do you use the on-prem or cloud version? Uh, I use the cloud version, and part most of that was because we having job sites and being out in the field, I wanted to be able to answer tickets as I was remote. And when they had the mobile application, it was great for that. Um, I now you have to use the web-based version of it. Um, I was very much was like, if I if I can do stuff from my iPad or my phone, I'll do it. Um, now I'm you know I'm not as bad as I used to be, where I used to go out and be like. You know, hold on, I got to bring my bag. And it's like, why are you bringing a bag? It's like, well, I need a laptop, which then I need a power charger. And then I need a, uh, I need a wireless access point. And then I'm going to probably <laughs> one of these other kids. Like I, I was yep. carrying a backpack everywhere I went. And it's like, yeah. I, just, I don't need that. Um, so if I can try to do it from my phone or that's an application for it. And that's usually one of my requirements for any program I look at is like, I need a mobile application. So either iOS or Android, which I have learned, apparently I'm unique in that I'm what work in IT and I use an iPhone. Um, I've just never been, I tried working with Android. I didn't like all the ads and stuff, but also I do tend to lean towards Apple security was a little bit better just because they push the updates out more frequently and it's coming directly from them. And that was really my big thing was I've always been more on the security conscious side. Uh, I blame watching Mr. Robot when I was first starting <laughs> IT uh, for that, but it's like, Hey, great show. I'm learning stuff, but Oh my God, the world's a horrible place and I shouldn't leave anything to anybody. So, Oh, absolutely. I, I I'm, I'm the person of my, my least favorite security breach issue was, uh, I had someone who wanted a laptop to work from home and they had a desktop in their office. So I was like, well, we can get you set up with that. And they brought it into the office because they're having problems. And they had taken a piece of the blue painter's tape and put it across the camera. It's like, OK, good, good. And then they wrote their password on it. Oh, like, no. see, 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 no, you're, you know, see, you, you did one no. good, but negated it entirely, you know, or, oh, gosh. you know, walking in and it's like the CFO was like, oh, I'm away from my desk, but I need help with something. I walk in, his computer's unlocked. And even if it was, I know his password's on a sticky note underneath the keyboard, you know, yeah. it's like, you can't do these things like this. There's you a know. reason. <laughs> I, I, I remember when I Im implemented a, a group policy in our organization where if you were in if your computer was inactive for 15 minutes, which I thought was pretty lenient, you know, it would log, uh, lock your screen. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell you how many people had a cow over that. I'm constantly having to log in. 
Yeah. So you're walking away from your computer so for how just, long? Why, 15 why minutes for, plus? Yeah. Why they're are you just sitting, sitting at your computer? Yeah, exactly. exactly. Or, or they're sitting at their computer and it still locks them out. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, well, after 15 minutes, you're not doing anything. So what does it matter? Maybe we need but to have anyway. a performance review for that department. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I really appreciate you taking the time uh, coming on the show today. And uh, you've been a wealth of knowledge. You're, you're uh, on honesty. Welcome back anytime. Uh, us, us bearded, bearded IT guys got to stay together. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. It's been fantastic. And uh, I would definitely love to be back if you got some topics or stuff you'd like to talk about in the future. And again, if anyone else would like to reach out or bounce ideas off of, feel free to reach out. I'm always willing to help others get into the industry. Um, you know, I think as people who took unique paths to get into it, uh, we can offer that information out to people. Uh, you know, even if it's as simple as, you know, hey, can you review my resume? You know, I, I'm, I do hire, I'm a hiring manager, so I look at resumes a lot. I know what I want to see from people on there. Um, you know, I can definitely take a look and I'll be more than willing to help people out as they need it. Absolutely. Well, thank you again. And I uh, hope you all enjoyed this video. And until next time, take it easy.